Pleasant Good Morning Church. According to the figures on the internet, as of November 23rd, 2021, which was yesterday, the total death toll for COVID-19 worldwide stands at 5,131,348 persons. And when you hear that figure, you have to ask yourself how many of those 5 million persons were saved. During the last 18 months, quite a number of persons died and stepped into eternity from planet Earth. And when we as a church consider these unfortunate statistics, we cannot help but feel a responsibility to preach the gospel to as many persons as possible so that even though they may they may suffer a tragic death or succumb to COVID-19 at least they would be assured of a salvation in heaven and in eternity because they accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior so today Today, Wednesday, the 24th of November, we are having a crusade. For the first time, we are having what you can call a virtual crusade. From a logical standpoint, there is no way we can gauge or assess how effective it will be. However, from the perspective of faith in God, and the expectation of the supernatural from God, we understand that with God all things are possible. So even though this may be a different style, an unusual style, an untested, untried style, it doesn't mean that it is bound to be an ineffective style. Because as I mentioned, with God all things are possible. The responsibility is ours to trust God and have faith in God that the restrictions of virtual church does not necessarily equate to a restriction in the hand of God. As I mentioned the Sunday last, two Sundays ago, this is what the Lord spoke to me. The Lord clearly said, Though you are restricted and you cannot have face to face, God said that my hand is not restricted. So even in the midst of virtual church and virtual crusades, God can still work. God is still working. So I want to encourage all of you to invite someone to the crusade, share the link with them, Encourage them to participate, to tune in on Facebook at 7 p.m. each night and give themselves a fighting chance at salvation. Because no man could repent or even believe on Jesus unless they hear the message. And on that, point, on that, on that note, I want to remind all of us and the purpose of a crusade is to win souls. It means that everything we do in the midst of a crusade is geared towards winning souls. The worship, the testimonies, the specials, the preaching of the word, all of them are, are geared, are designed towards winning souls. Long story short, crusades are not for believers. Your attitude as a believer in Christ, should not be to come a crusade to get blessed or to, or to get a breakthrough or to get a deliverance or to get a word for yourself. Our attitude as believers where crusades are concerned should never be about getting. The crusade is the one type of gathering where every believer's motive should be given. Giving service to God in the interest of winning souls. 
whenever a crusade is announced, every believer should understand that is your time for service. Crusade is not entertainment. Crusade is work. Crusade is service unto God. And lastly, crusade requires teamwork. And it means that every member of the church must participate in getting sinners and unbelievers to attend the crusade. One man cannot do it. So as I mentioned a little while ago, people would not believe on Jesus or repent unless they hear the message. And people would not hear the message unless they attend. The responsibility of the preacher is to prepare himself to hear from God, to wait on God, to study the word, to represent the word and represent those truths to the audience of unbelievers in a most effective manner. But while he is doing that, it is the responsibility of the church army, or if you prefer, it is the responsibility of the team of believers to understand the need for teamwork in terms of getting sinners in attendance. So that if each believer invites at least one person, it means that the attendance should at least double the membership of the church. So if you have loved ones and friends, family members, relatives, co-workers, who you care about, and who you are courageous enough to invite, and you ought to be courageous enough, well, then invite them. The advantage with virtual church is that they don't even have to leave their homes. They don't even have to spend money on transport or putting gas in their vehicles. All they have to do is click on a link and they can be part of the service for one hour, one hour and a half maximum. And they can hear the gospel, the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Their lives literally depend on it. But let me remind all of you that the reason why we preach the gospel is so that men will be saved from an eternity in hell. That makes the gospel and its message the most important message. The most important message on planet Earth. So, I guess the Lord Jesus is looking at us and he is marking our exam papers and he has an expectation of us. Those of us who understand the urgency and the importance of the task and need to win souls, we would endeavor to do our very best to contribute our service towards this purpose. So I trust God that you are understanding and that your efforts will be forthcoming. In the meantime, God bless you, be encouraged. I want you at the end of this video, spend a little time praying that the Spirit of God will be moving online and that the attendance will be great on Facebook, that the ministry of the world will be effective and that people will be convinced of their sin, convicted to repent, and converted into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.